The first bite is placed at one end of the incision, inserting the needle at 90 degrees to the tissue surface and roughly 5 millimeters from the wound edge. After forming a knot using an instrument tie, the tail of suture is trimmed. The assistant then holds the bite of suture under tension, whilst further continuous sutures are placed to close the incision. It is important to pass the needle perpendicular to the wound, and this will result in the external portion of the sutures lying diagonally. At the end of the suture line, a reef knot can be formed between the bite and residual loop of suture, as shown. To make a bite through the skin, start with the needle point perpendicular to the surface. As the needle is advanced, turn your wrist so that the needle follows a curved path and will emerge at an equal distance from the opposite edge of the wound. Use your assisting forceps to apply gentle counter pressure and then grasp the needle as it emerges from the tissues. As the suture is pulled through, it is essential to keep the needle in view. You can either use the forceps to pull the suture or use your little finger to take up the slack. The suture is then tied using an instrument tie. Form the knot on the side of the wound, so that it does not interfere with the healing process. To estimate the next bite placement, Consider the distance of the first bite from the wound edge. The next bite should be placed at a point that is double this distance. The needle is again introduced at 90 degrees to the surface and driven along a curved path with counter pressure applied. Sometimes it is difficult to maintain tension with an initial single throw and the first hitch may become loose. In this case, a surgeon's knot can be formed. The first throw can be tightened down and then jammed over to the side to keep it in position while the next throw is being formed. Further sutures are placed at equal distances until the wound is closed. Ensure that the knots are sitting at the side of the wound and not directly above the incision site. The aim of this technique is to close a wound in such a way that no suture is visible on the skin surface. An absorbable, undyed suture material is used for increased cosmesis. The first bite is made deep and passed superficial. Starting the bite on the opposite edge superficially, it is then passed deep. A reef knot is tied with just three throws to keep the suture material in the wound to a minimum. The tail should be divided as close to the knot as possible. 
the long length of suture must now be passed from deep to superficial at the apex of the incision. Working from the apex, small bites are placed just deep to the dermal layer. The entry point of a bite is placed directly opposite the exit point of the previous bite. The suture is pulled along the line of the incision to close the wound edges. Once the other end of the wound is reached, the sutures will be quite superficial and it will not be possible to place a deep knot. A superficial knot at this point will erode through the skin surface and produce a small stitch abscess, reducing overall cosmesis. Thus, to complete this closure, the needle is reinserted at the apex and driven through the tissues to emerge distal to the wound. A Z-shaped suture is placed, passing the needle back into the skin close to the previous exit point and driving it perpendicular to the incision. To complete the Z suture, the needle is again inserted at the previous exit point and driven perpendicular to the wound. The suture is then divided flush with the skin surface, leaving the wound closed with no visible suture. When removing a suture, it is important to remember that the section of suture that has been sitting on the skin surface is potentially infected. This section should not therefore be passed through the tissues as the suture is removed. The suture is divided just below the knot and the tail pulled so that the external part of the suture does not pass through the tissues. After opening the suture pack, the needle is presented ready for mounting in the needle holder. Grasp the needle with the tip of the needle holder, two-thirds along the shaft from the needle tip. When removing the suture from the pack, it is often useful to use your little finger to take up the slack in the suture. The needle can either be held two-thirds away from the tip and perpendicular to the needle holder, this is a less commonly used method of averting the wound edge and redistributing tension and is occasionally used, for example, on the back of the hand. In this instance, the suture is passed the normal distance away from the skin edge on either side. The needle is then turned round for a reverse pass and reinserted a short distance from where it emerged on that side of the wound to then emerge a short distance from the original insertion point as shown.
An instrument tie with four throws is then performed. This is called a horizontal mattress because the suture line is parallel to the wound's horizon, as it were. Again, it is important to take up the slack of the suture before the second pass to avoid too much friction within the suture line, causing trauma to the skin and exit points of the suture. The vertical mattress is used when we wish to evert the skin edges of a wound. The suture is passed through both sides of the wound and then pulled through at this stage to avoid pulling a long length of material through when finer bites are taken in the second stage. By pronating and supinating the wrists, it is easy to change the needle from a forehand to a backhand grip. The next two bites are taken just at the skin edge as shown. The suture is then secured with an instrument tie using at least four throws. If the skin edges open up slightly, this is usually due to the second bites being too far away from the skin edge.